INFP, ESTP, this may sound like a secret alien language right now, or just a random arrangement of letters, but by the end of this video, I hope to make you a whiz at MBTI personalities. I think I should first start off by introducing where these letters originate from. They're associated with MBTI, which stands for the Myers-Briggs Indicator. This is a personality test that has taken over social media. In MBTI, there are 16 personality types that combine together from eight letter combinations. Each letter represents a certain personality type. The first letter combination is associated with a person's energy, extroversion or introversion. The second letter combination is how a person would process information, sensing or intuition. The third letter combination is how an individual makes decisions, thinking or feeling. Finally, the fourth letter combination is associated with how an individual lives their outer life, judging or perceiving. Using the 16 combinations, some people even created types for famous TV shows or movie characters that we know and love. For example, this Grey's Anatomy MBTI chart, or this Harry Potter MBTI chart. So you may be wondering, was this test just produced by a teen magazine? Someone with no science background? Random? Pure coincidence even? This test was actually designed by a mother-daughter duo, Catherine Briggs and Isabel Myers. Catherine and her daughter Isabel were fascinated by the idea of different personality types. This fascination all started when Isabel met a young man, Chief Myers, and fell in love, but immediately realized he was different from her family. Isabel, being so fascinated with personalities at that time, wanted to better understand what this difference was. Catherine, Isabel's mother, also became intrigued by the idea of personalities. Isabel worked hard in creating questions that would best sort people into different personalities and finally decided on 172 questions. She distributed them to her child's high school along with medical schools. Now, to dive into the psychology behind this test. The scientist that contributed to this test the most was Carl G. Jung, a famous Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who found analytical psychology. So what was it in Jung's theory that intrigued Briggs? This is the actual science behind MBTI. Jung's theory of individual preferences suggested that differences in mental and emotional functioning always cause random variation in human behavior. Imagine a scenario where two people face the same situation. For example, they face a difficult math question. What would they do? One person may just spend hours trying to solve that question by themselves, while the other person finds a group of friends to get help. This can be explained by personality theory, that the two people may have different personality preferences which influence their specific choice. In Jung's psychological types theory, he described two attitudes and four functions that make up personality preferences. These include being extroverted or introverted for attitudes, and for feelings of functions he uses sensing, intuitive, thinking, and feeling. Jung believed that it is typical for a person to have all attitudes and functions in varying proportions. Most people will be more extroverted than introverted or the other way around. They will also use one of the four functions more than the other three. This is defined as principal function by Jung. From this, if you add two attitudes and four functions together, you only have six out of the eight MBTI letters. So where are the two other letters, J and P? In addition to the attitudes and function, Jung also identified auxiliary function, which supports the principal functions. This includes judging and perceiving, which are the last two letters of MBTI. The MBTI assessment is both reliable and valid. People often get three out of four preferences the same 70 to 90% of the time. Also, there are numerous studies that showed the reliability of the assessment. Even 88% of the Fortune 500 companies in 115 countries use this test. A paper by Dr. Geyer in 2014 stated that there are some relationships between personality types and behaviors associated with personality disorders. However, there are also still some problems with this test. Some people have been arguing for many years about its usages and validity on the opposite side. 
First, let's take a look at the mathematical structure of this test. We'd expect results of the test to be distributed like a bell-shaped curve. If you randomly select 500 people between ages 18 and 25 and measure their heights and then draw a graph of the results, you will have a normal or bell-shaped distribution. Of course, some people are very short and some are very tall, but those are extremely rare. In the case of MBTI, we do not see such a distribution of data, as most people score between the two ends. For example, one person may score as extreme as extroversion and the results could be similar to another person who scores as an introversion. This is odd considering that they are two opposite personality characteristics. In addition to this, although the company claims to have 70 to 90% accuracy, several studies show that the retest reliability of the MBTI is lower. Furthermore, although some companies use this test, there is a lack of evidence to show a positive relationship between MBTI type and success within an occupation. There is a lack of evidence to show that ESFPs are better or worse salespeople than INTJ. Despite the lack of data, because of the simplicity of the test, some people could use the test inappropriately. For instance, a manager may come to believe that only a certain personality type is appropriate for a specific job. They may conclude that only ISTJs make good accountants, resulting in bias in promoting, hiring, or firing at the workplace. With all these issues, the test administering company has acknowledged some concerns and stated that the test needs to be conducted in a specific condition with no distractions. Also, the test must be conducted by a certified person for it to count towards an actual MBTI assessment. Although it may be up to you to decide whether or not to trust this test, this assessment is a fun way to learn more about yourself. MBTI can be a powerful tool for personal development and increasing one's self-awareness. A free version of the test that mimics the actual assessment is widely available on the internet. Although it is not an actual MBTI administered by the official company, you can try this test yourself to determine which of the 16 personalities you fall under 